Today we're driving the all-new 2022 BMW i4. This is the M50i, it's the most powerful version. It makes 536 horsepower, it goes about 270 miles on a full charge. It's all-wheel drive, it's basically a 4 Series Grand Coupe that BMW has electrified. It's not a ground-up EV platform, um, but it starts around $66,000. As tested, this is about 82 grand with pretty much every option loaded into it. That's pretty common with press cars these days, just so people can see all of the options. Chances are, though, you can get into one of these for around 65 to 75 grand with a decent amount of options. Let's walk you around this new i4 and uh, show you what it looks like inside and out. This is painted in a very special color. This is Frozen Portimao Blue. It's a $3,600 option. And uh, yeah, pretty stunning. We also have the 20 inch wheels, lots of carbon fiber. This is the M mirrors, which aren't as special anymore since they're putting them on a lot of different BMWs. We have the Bucktooth Bavarian Beaver front grille, BMW laser headlamps, M Sport packages, M brakes, all that good stuff. Pretty familiar looking. I mean, it just pretty much looks like a four series Grand Coupe. I love this hatch design in the rear. It makes for a really nice rear cargo space. Harman Kardon sub down there. Let's take a look at the back seat. A decent amount of usable space back here, but I will say it is a little bit more cramped than I think I remember the, the 4 Series Grand Coupe being. Maybe there's a little bit more seat height to the batteries or something, but getting car seats in and out of here, getting myself in and out of here this week has been a little bit tighter than I'm used to in a 4 Series Grand Coupe. Nice looking interior though. You can see BMW has done away with the physical climate control knobs and switches, which I'm not a fan of, but that's pretty much one of the only major changes with this in the infotainment. You can see we have this massive dual screen layout now um, it's okay, it's a decent infotainment. I've had some issues this week connecting wireless CarPlay, and uh, just yesterday the satellite radio stopped working. So this, this particular i4 is having some issues. Unfortunately, we won't be able to test the Harman Kardon sound system in this this week, but I will say that in the time that I did have it and was able to listen to it, uh, it sounds nice. It's a little bit better than the standard Harman Kardons that you get with BMW. All right, let's hop in, talk a little about this interior. So we have some blue accents, very similar to what we've seen from electric vehicles in the past with BMW. We have to turn it back on because whenever you get out, it turns off. Pretty familiar looking switch gear all throughout. Wireless charging tray right there, a couple of cup holders, comfortable seats, nice sunroof, and this new infotainment. So really my biggest complaint with this is that you get a climate menu instead of physical climate controls. We don't have ventilated seats in this car either that I can find. Um, it's just a heated seat option and it works fine. I mean, you can just set climate control to auto and it works, but you're always having to take away your view from whatever you're looking at, whether it's CarPlay or your music or navigation to adjust the climate menu for everything besides temperature. Luckily, you do get a heated steering wheel button right here on the steering wheel, which I appreciate. Otherwise, lots of carbon fiber. In this, we have a few different drive modes, sport boost, sport individuals, or sport, comfort, and eco pro. These menus are just gorgeous. The graphics, the responsiveness of the system, the fact that you can use it as a touchscreen, and the scroll wheel, the redundancy there is actually really nice. It's still a little bit clunky. I don't really love this new iDrive 8. I kind of prefer the previous generation. It was a little bit more intuitive to use, a little bit simpler and I think some of the buttons help that. I'm missing a button for my driving assistance systems. Quick access button, they've gotten rid of that. Um, hidden it somewhere in a menu. Otherwise though, this has been a pretty straightforward car to live with this week, except for the couple issues that I've had with CarPlay. All right, let's take this for a drive and see what it's like on the road. We're gonna start off in comfort mode. The uh, active, or the enhanced sound is a little bit quieter in this mode. There's a subtle noise that the car makes when you put it in reverse, but otherwise it's pretty quiet at low speeds. 
if you're wearing headphones with this video, which I highly recommend, this is recorded in binaural audio, there's a subtle hum that you can hear from these speakers. Here it is. Sounds kind of neat. So there's a couple of different ways you can drive this i4. You can drive it like a normal vehicle where you let your foot off the brake, it'll start to creep and coast, and you can press the brake to slow down, or you can flip it over into B mode, which is braking mode or regenerative braking mode, and it'll come to a complete stop, and you can pretty much one pedal drive this. And, oh yeah, it's really quick. 536 horsepower, about 5,000 pounds curb weight, a little bit over. It's not light, it feels heavy, it is heavy. This is definitely much heavier than some options from Tesla, like the Model 3. It's a little bit heavier, not much, than the Mustang Mach-E. Um, yeah, you feel its weight, and it definitely affects dynamics a little bit. Regenerative braking is actually pretty strong, and it increases a little bit the more you drive this car. I actually prefer driving this i4 with regenerative braking enabled, and I like that you can switch between regen and normal driving so easily with this shifter. Um, the brake pedal on this is a little bit touchy. It's, it has good feel, it has a good amount of bite, but it's almost too much bite, especially if you have passengers in the car, you're gonna be throwing them around a little bit more than they wanna be. Every now and then you just have to give the brake pedal a little bit of a tap to come to a stop a little bit quicker, but for the most part, it's all tuned quite well. What is interesting is the throttle response. So in pretty much any mode, uh, some EVs, they kind of dull the throttle response to smooth that power delivery. In this, it's instant. It is whatever you put into the get into the right pedal, almost a gas pedal, whatever you put into the throttle, you get out in acceleration and it's immediate. Um, so you have to kind of be careful with how much throttle you apply. The advantage is that you get instant response uh, from this and it kind of offers a unique level of response compared to a lot of other EVs and other just vehicles in general. Let's put us into sport boost mode and see what this sounds like. <laughs> That's wild. Just wild. The acceleration is definitely this car's party piece. And the sound just enhances that experience. Not a lot of steering feel. It's pretty numb, pretty dead. Pretty typical of BMWs these days besides uh, you know anything that's a little bit more enthusiast based. I enjoyed the steering on the new BMW 230i, but that's kind of about all I've been impressed with lately as far as steering feel. BMW's actually kind of touting the, uh, the distant uh, feel of the steering as a positive because it kind of isolates you from the driving experience, which in an EV with 5,000 pounds under it, eh, I don't know. Most people might prefer the more distant driving experience. I see some M badges on this i4 M50, and I say, you know what, I want a little bit more of an engaging driving experience, but that's okay. Definitely not as fun to drive or engaging or light and nimble feeling as a Tesla Model 3, for example, but much better build quality, much better interior quality. Maybe it doesn't feel as quick, but it's close enough. <laughs> The sound is just awesome. Of course, uh, developed and tuned by Hans Zimmer. Journalists love to tout that fact. Yeah, it definitely adds some drama and excitement to the experience. And it gets pretty loud, too. Ride quality is decent. It does a pretty good job smoothing out most bumps, road imperfections. Of course, we have adaptive suspension and we have rear air springs, rear air suspension in this i4. That 
that must be because BMW added so much weight to the rear of this car that maybe it needs a little bit more leveling. I don't know, that's an interesting decision. Off we go again. <laughs> uh. All right, let's put us into drive, comfort, turn on cruise control. We have distance control. We have assisted driving mode which will engage active steering when it senses the lanes. It's not really doing much right now, but we'll get there. There we go. If you take your hands off the wheel for a few seconds, it will prompt you to steer again. Pretty much just wants to sense your hand on the steering wheel. And it'll pretty much do its own job from there. Let's see if we can uh, change lanes. It will change lanes on its own, which is pretty sweet. I found the assisted driving system in this to work pretty well this week. It's been it's been nice. Nice to live with. You can easily change between distance control and assisted driving mode. I appreciate that. It looks like we've got an open entrance ramp here. Back into Sport Boost. <laughs> this does have launch control. It's pretty wicked. Launch control on this is just super, super impressive. Limit handling. The handling in this i4 feels pretty good up until about eight tenths, and then it just kind of falls apart. There's a lot of body roll at the limit. Um, you feel the weight of this car. It feels like the suspension isn't quite tuned to limit handling. You can turn traction control off in this, but it really isn't fully off. But this week I have noticed quite a bit of intervention just, you know, trying to kick it sideways on a whim. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate because I feel like if BMW is slapping some M badges on this, you should be able to play around with the chassis a little bit more than uh, what this allows. Like, really, you try and nothing happens. <laughs> So that's a little bit of a disappointment. It feels like the power distribution is a little bit wonky too. Like it doesn't really know where to send all that torque uh, to all four wheels. There's a little bit of torque steer. It's it's a strange car to drive at the limit. Uh, really, this is this is not a really good performance vehicle. I would say it's more of a, a nice daily driver. It's more of a comfortable vehicle that you can give it little squirts of acceleration here and there, and uh, that's the party piece, not the chassis, unfortunately, which is uh, kind of a disappointment and a surprise from BMW. I thought they would have done a better job with that. All right, so one thing we have to try out is launch control. Let's see what this can do. Sport boost mode, traction off, come to a stop here. Foot hard down on the brake, full throttle, launch control active. Or 60. Pretty good. Pretty quick. <laughs> when the tires are cold, and you start this up early in the morning, you get a little bit of wheel spin from the front tire, and there's a little bit of vibration. It's it's a pretty seamless, smooth, dramatic launch, but you can almost get the same effect by just hard down on your right foot, full throttle. Comfort mode though, ride is super soft. This is definitely one of the uh, better riding electric vehicles on the market. Turn traction control back on, not that it really makes much of a difference. You can hear the difference in engine sound between comfort and sport boost. There's a little bit of wind noise on the highway, mostly just from kind of these frameless windows here out through the seals. But otherwise, it's a pretty quiet, isolated driving experience. I found this week in 60, 70, 80 degree temperatures, 
no issues with range. I assume you could probably easily eke out 270 to 300 miles of driving out of this. In the winter, it's probably going to take about a 20 to 30 percent hit. Of course, the only disadvantage to every car besides the Tesla is the charge network, uh, Electrify America, EVgo. They're all working on it. It's going to get better with time, but uh, this should charge, I think, around 30 minutes, 10 to 80 percent. Not the quickest charging rate, but um, you know it's usable if you needed to take it on a longer drive. Really what you need to know is this is a pretty heavy electric vehicle. I'd really like to see manufacturers uh, start to shave some weight off of these things. 5,000 pounds for essentially a sedan. That's a lot. That's more than what my fourth gen V8 4Runner weighs. <laughs> Get this nice expensive carbon fiber package but it's pretty much just for appearances okay so bmw i4 m50 how can we sum things up super fast makes a cool noise looks pretty good reasonably practical except for some back seat space that's a little bit cramped all we'll the trunk and, and uh, cargo area in the back in fact you can fold the seats down you kind of get a hatchback design it's super useful no frunk, unfortunately, but honestly, I don't know how many people would actually use a frunk. I don't know, in, in practice, in real life, unless if you really needed it, like in a Porsche 911 or something, would you really use a frunk on a regular basis? I'm not sure if you actually would. Decent range, really nice interior quality. Um, unfortunately, we've had some issues with the iDrive system this week with things not working. I haven't bothered to reset it. That might have fixed it. Um, but, you know, that's just something that's specific to this press car, unfortunately. Otherwise, I think this is a pretty decent electric car. I would really have liked BMW to do a better job with the chassis tuning here, though. I think that's something that could have really set this car apart in the EV space. And in my mind, that's all software. That's all tuning. A little bit of suspension in there, too. But that's an opportunity missed to really kind of differentiate this i4 and uh, yeah hopefully BMW will improve upon that in the future so we'll see but for now this i4 is a little bit more of a budget EV offering option from BMW maybe not this M50i but you can get a, a long range rear wheel drive i4 and get over 300 miles uh, to a charge this M50 as a performance variant is fun but uh, definitely not a track or enthusiast or, you know, uh, really a, an M car counterpart. It's just really fast and has a decent chassis up to about eight tenths. So anyway, that's going to sum up the i4 M50i for me. Uh, excited to drive some more options. I would be very curious to see what a base model feels like. This is sixty-five grand, $66,000. That's not factoring in any tax credits or incentives. Um, so, you know, you could save a little bit of there. But chances are, it's also a BMW. You're gonna want about six to eight grand in options to kind of make this nice. Climate packages, various things. Everything's an option in the BMW world, and uh, that's gonna push you over seventy thousand dollars. So still not cheap. All right, that's it. Only burned about eight percent battery in that whole drive, which is pretty good. Okay guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up for this frosted Portimao blue. What a color. I think if I were considering an i4, I would go for the long range rear wheel drive, the smaller wheels. I'm sure you still get about 90 to 80% of the power, the speed, that instant throttle response, and the driving experience. Unless if you really need all-wheel drive, that might be the one to go for. Okay, that's it for this one. We'll see you guys later. Take care.